hope you are all doing great and you have some profitable automated bots as I have as you can see so for those of you who've been following last uh, trades we made together on previous webcasts you know about the uh, performance of the bots that we monitor it's now doing even better I added uh, OXT I guess yeah that's the one I added uh, a week ago that's the Orchid protocol not really satisfied with the results as of now because like well due to the lack of the volatility on, on this coin and maybe I should have configured uh, it with other parameters so I have 2.96 as a great step for the OX and maybe I should have put a lower uh, gap so that way I could uh, monetize on this minor price swings we had on this coin but yeah it's what I'm showing you now is basically the way you should uh, monitor the activity of like the performance of your bots because that way you know if they are doing good or bad you can actually compare the results so let's say for OXT let's go with a thousand dollars and let's set the same uh, what, what, can, can I see the trading range? Yeah, and let's set the same trading range pretty much. And let's see if the performance would be worse or better with other parameters. So I think that's the amount we had. It's actually uh, 35 grid levels. Yeah, but here it's... Dun, 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 dun. Oh yeah, because that's the bigger gap. Sure. But let's see now. Thousand dollars on OXT. But let's set a trading range like this, just for the uh, sideways market. And let's check the performance as if we would launch it with uh, same parameters but a different trading range. Backtest. Uh, last week so the result would be six percent yeah well that's compared with my 1.48 percent well certainly this would be better if I would have opted for the uh, grid setup with 35 grid levels but in a narrow trading range instead of the one that I have right now but the reason why I have this trading range for OX, this wide gap in between the orders, is because I want this uh, robot to trade long term and to lock in big returns, like 3% margin returns. So that's the, the, the thing. But the topic of today's webcast is uh, going to be dedicated to the trading station we have here. That's for the manual trade mode. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks how you can use different orders to um, quickly jump into the market, how to exit from the market, and what are the uh, solutions you can have to maximize your returns and to secure your position. So let's, let's go. Um, so two weeks ago, I think, I told you that we are about to add a new feature and here we have it finally released that's the uh, OCO no, known as the one cancels other so let's start with this one okay that's like the, 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 the hot feature we have as of now so if you move your cursor on the question mark you will see that it's just basically cancels out if a certain condition is met so for example let's say I set limit uh, buy order let's say I want to buy OXT at the price of 0 0.37 and let's say I want to buy 10% from my entire balance the available balance to be precise so you would notice that uh, you can now optimize the OCO order but for that, you need to have some open orders to 
to play with okay because as you see the condition is that it is it's going to be linked with another order so once this limit by order that we just set for oxt is being triggered by the market price so once the price hits this uh, price level at which we set the limit by order this will cancel out some other open orders that we could have so as now i don't have any open orders let's open any random uh let's say on one inch to use the t uh, so let's say i i don't know if uh okay so let's say i have two coins in in in, in the list and i have only a uh, hundred dollars okay that i want to allocate either to one inch or either to um, the oxt for example so the, the first one that hits my price is going to be added in my portfolio and uh, of course i want to cancel out the other one because i already spent hundred dollars that i wanted to allocate either to this coin one inch or oxt okay so here how it, I would do this. So for example, 3.2, that's the price. And let's say I would want to spend $10. And this would be my limit by order. Okay. Okay, let's set 11, whatever. So now you have this open order, which is waiting for the price to fall back down to 3.2. And that way... It's going to trigger this order and also as i said i want to make sure that if the price of oxt falls quicker to the point at which i want to buy it then i want to have this option so let's go oxt and let's set limit by order here at the price of 0 0.37 and let's set 11 no not, not 11 let's set 11 dollars here but this time I want to make sure that my OCO is on and okay well, I don't have open orders that's strange it might be lagging the last time I checked this feature it was working perfectly so as of now I don't see reason why let's maybe uh, update it real quick okay that's really strange because I actually have this open order pending. It's really strange. It shouldn't be like that. It should display me one inch position that I can select and cancel. It will be canceled out once the OXT order is, is filled. Okay. But for some reason, I don't see it now. Which is really strange because I tested this before, like three hours ago, just to make sure it works. But yeah, for some reason it does not. Let's let's then uh, come back to this feature later. Hopefully it's gonna work uh, again. Maybe it's just undergoing some issues due to the overload or uh, whatever. I don't know. It's just strange that it doesn't work as of now. But yeah, let's not waste time. You, you also notice that apart from the limits and market orders, we have stop order. But let's go step by step, even for those who are newbies in that. And I will just quickly explain to you each order. So limit buy and limit sell order. That's like the order you can have if you want to enter or exit the market with the uh, minimum fee you can have. So for example, you can go on Binance and check the uh, fee and you will see that for the market buy or sell orders you're gonna pay a larger fee so that's exactly over here um, this uh, maybe maybe that's not the best page to show you I think there was even a better one not, not this one. But anyway, for market orders, typically on exchanges, on centralized exchanges, uh, since market orders, they are of the first priority. And for being in the list of first priority, you need to pay a larger fee. So usually you only use market buy or market sell when you need to enter the market or exit the market right now. 
So that's the time when you would use. And that, for that, for this speed, you pay a, a larger fee. Whereas when it comes to limit buy or limit sell order, you are basically a, a market maker. And that means that as a market maker, uh, your order will be placed in the order book. So it's going to be visible for the rest of the traders or portfolio managers out there on the market. And then that the way people can see what's the demand and supply on the market. And that way, uh, market becomes more or less transparent. And since you are now the market maker, then you pay a lower fee. Sometimes on some exchanges, it is even a, a, a negative fee. So that means that actually the exchange pays you for that. So you would use limit buy or limit sell order when you don't have, uh, I mean, you are not in the rush to enter or exit the market. You'd rather wait for some price to, uh, for the market to reach. And then once it reaches this price, you will enter it automatically. So for example, I want to buy OXT at 0 0.37. So you, I mean, it can be 10 minutes until it reaches this price, or it can be a few days. It can be even weeks. That's the, that's the thing. It's a pending order and it's going to be triggered only once the price hits it. As simple as that. So now you have the stop limit, which is a bit more complicated than a typical limit order because you now have this extra uh, information that you need to feed the exchange with. And it's also known as the uh, conditional price. So for example, I want, I want my uh, uh, exchange to set a limit by order only if it at first reaches, let's say, 0 0.42, 0 0.42. And once it reaches this price level, so that's our condition, condition, uh, I want it to plot a limit by order at the price of 0 0.4, for example. So why would I do this? Why not setting 0 0.42? Well, that's because I think that once it reaches 0 0.42, I believe that it's gonna fall back a bit. And that way I can buy the OXT at a better price, at a lower price in this case. So that's one case scenario you can use with a stop limit. Because you set the condition, once the condition is triggered by the market price, it automatically uh, activates the, the order itself, the limit buy order. Okay, so once I click buy, you will now see that my order is plotted where the price is 0 0.42. But once the market price hits it, it's going to plot a limit by order at the price of 0 0.42. Okay. So that's the, uh, the thing. Let's check real quick. <clears throat> okay, for some reason still doesn't work. But anyway, let's go back. And the same applies to the uh, stop limit sell order. Let's remove all the drawings here and let's cancel this order out. So for the... Uh, stop limit sell order can work the same way. So for example, you want the price to break the resistance at first. Once it breaks it and you see that the price is now trading above the resistance for let's say the next two days, you are now confident that you, you, you can expect the price to climb even higher and that way you can sell your OXC at a higher price for example. So what you're going to do, you're going to put your uh, stop at 0 0.3965. That's where we have our resistance here. And then you want it to activate a limit sell order at a higher price, let's say 44. So that way, 
By doing this, you expect the market to at first reach a certain condition, and the condition that we said is reaching the resistance line, trading above it, and then hitting the price of 0.44, and that's our conditional price. And once it's being triggered by the market price, it will plot a limit by order at 0.44, which is somewhere. Oh, sorry, zero point. Uh, yeah, exactly, zero point forty-four. So this is this this is where it's gonna set the uh, sell limit order, and it's gonna sell at uh, OXT from your balance. Okay. Um, you can play with this order in any way you want, and you can combine it with uh, some other orders as well. So, for example. You can even set a stop loss in advance for this stop limit sell order. And you can set stop limit buy in, in that case, for example. Well, if you, well, basically, if you are trading futures market, that's how you can use it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the only difference from the ordinary limit buy or limit sell order is that now you have this conditional price, which once it once the market price <clears throat> meets this uh, condition, it's going to execute the order that you want it to plot. Okay, so that's the thing how you can use the stop limit. Um, the stop order is well, honestly, it's like my favorite one, I would say, uh, because that's the order that <clears throat> you really need then you anticipate a certain uh, price movement, like a crazy price movement, and you don't want to skip it. You, you know that if you anticipate a, a strong rally, and let's say you, you plot your stop limit buy order over here, okay, then there is a huge chance that it won't be triggered because as you know, market orders are of the first priority and uh, of the second priority, you have limit orders. So it can be that there won't be any liquidity on the market to execute your limit by order because the whole, the whole volume was captured by the uh, market trader. Like, sorry, traders that been uh, executing limit buy and limit sell, sorry, uh, market sell and market buy orders. And that way, when you use limit buy as a stop limit, um, there is a chance that you will miss this, you will skip this rally. So if you don't want this to happen, uh, which can happen if there's a huge market rally or a huge market drop, uh, instead you would plot a limit, oh sorry, stop buy order. And let's say, let's close this one. Um, and let's reload the page and maybe let's use another uh, example on, on another coin maybe ion trading to usdt so let's say that you found a certain formation uh, on a chart and let's say you expect the price to breach this angled down resistance line and you anticipate that once it breaches it other market participants will buy this coin like crazy which will move the price to the moon and you don't want to skip it so you're gonna plot stop buy order at the price of let's say 0.18 uh, point point mm, one maybe no actually it's a bit higher Point three, and you want to buy 25% uh, from your available balance so as you click on buy ion it's gonna execute a market buy order at this price at the time when the market price reaches this price level so that way you're gonna pay uh, a, a bigger fee compared with the ordinary limit buy order but 
your market entry is pretty much guaranteed here because that's the first priority order and that way you don't skip the market rally but for that you just pay a bigger fee that's 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 the thing so that's why i really like this order especially that i expect some kind of uh, extreme volatility on the market and I'd rather stick with limit, sorry, a stop buy or stop sell orders because I know that even though I pay a bigger fee, which is relatively bigger, it's not that big. Um, like by, by, by 95%, I would say, it's guaranteed that you will be, like your order will be executed because that's the first market priority order, okay? It's kind of uh, for you to stay safe, okay? So... Yeah, well, that's pretty much it about the orders we, we have, like the limit buy, limit sell. The market buy and sell, it's, it's really straightforward. If I, let's say, want to buy 100 ions right now, it's going to buy it right now at the market price. Okay. And the stop one we just covered. Stop limit also covered. And also we have some additional uh, order types, like the, the shadow order and the TVAP. So the TVAP is, is let, let's say you don't want to, to buy Aeon right now. Uh, at, okay, let's say you wanted to allocate 10,000, uh, not 10,000, it's, what's, 70? No, it's not 55. So yeah, that's around 55, maybe even 56. Yeah. So let's say you wanted to buy 56,000 Aeons, which is like $10,000. Uh, but you don't want to buy it uh, at one price straight away because, well, if not the case for Aeon, but for other coins that have a low liquidity on the market, this kind of huge order could move the market crazy and you would not end up buying the coin at the best price because of the uh, low liquidity on this coin and instead you'd rather buy it proportionately so you can buy 56,000 Aeons in 6 hours in let's say 40 orders no, 40, yeah, 40. so that way it calculates that for, for each order it's going to buy you 1,400 Aeons and it's going to execute these 40 orders within the time uh, period of framework, sorry, of 6 hours. And that way you kind of spread your investment. So the price can swing and that way your TVAP will execute your order here and then at the lower price lower price and then the price rises it will buy at the higher price but eventually you spread the risk you don't put a lot of pressure on the market if that's a low liquidity coin and yeah in six hours you buy what you wanted it's actually a great tool for portfolio managers that manage huge portfolios like sometimes 10 million 20 million dollars and let's say you want to buy some coins like uh, Akash Network. So for those of you who, who, who know this project, you know that on the market there is uh, not that many coins uh, traded publicly because around 80% or something of Akash coins, they are in the locked uh, staking and in the possession of the team. So it's a kind of a low liquidity coin and some huge buy orders like a couple of million dollars it can really put a huge pressure on the price you can drive it like crazy on your own so to avoid this you'd rather spread the volume over time and over some multiple orders so that's how you can use the team up the same way with the sell if you need to sell this huge amount of uh, Aeons, for example, then you can sell it within the next seven days. So each day it's going to sell a portion of it. But that way you kind of gradually get out of the market. So this can be an option for you as well. Yeah, so that's pretty much about the orders. 
Um, what I like about the limit buy order or limit sell order is that you can set uh, multiple take profits. So, for example, well, why is that? Uh, all the positions. I'm not sure why it's not loading this uh, order we set with you. This yellow one should be here in the list. I mean, for, for some reason, I don't know, like maybe you guys can explain to me, but only on webcasts it happens that you try to show something, but it doesn't work as it's supposed to work. Because literally two hours before the webcast, everything worked perfectly well. But as of now, I don't see my OCO orders, so I, I cannot show you for some reason. Maybe let's try again real quick. Let's say I want to buy this at this price, uh, $20. Uh, buy. Yep, so that's the order. And let's say I want to set... Uh, Another one on one inch to be USD um, at three dollars twenty in total. Uh, okay, maybe. Yeah, it's it's still you see it should show me my open order, but you see it says you don't have open orders, but in fact I do have open order here. That's the one we just set. I on trading to USDT. It should show me it displayed here, so I could select it and. It would cancel out if the one inch order is being uh, executed at first. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, I cannot show you this. So I'm gonna, like, after this webcast, I'm gonna go to the uh, IT department and tell them that what the heck? The guy's been waiting for this feature, but I cannot show it to you. So yeah, I promise you that I'm gonna make my best to. Uh, tell them that it's it's a bad thing that on the webcast I cannot show the order like the new feature that should be working perfectly okay but yeah let's uh, go back to limit order in that case let's go to maybe Alice to use the tea um, yeah and sorry for my voice I think it might sound a bit weird because I got sick a bit, uh, have a sore throat, so it might sound like not 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 my typical voice if you compare with other webcasts. But yeah, anyway, still making this, still hosting this webcast for you guys just to show you some tips and tricks. So yeah, I mean, uh, you know that I follow this rule, which is like first you allocate fifty percent to automated bots. Next one is twenty percent to smart trading and that's exactly what we are uh, discussing today that's the smart trading using this uh, manual trade orders like limit buy market buy stop limit and the rest goes to uh, hodl strategy just buy crypto and hold it so you know that in in the smart trade mode to which i allocate 20% my entire balance you have this perfect thing as multiple take profits you can set up to five and that way you increase the odds that you will get out of the market with at least some profit because for example if you set just one order oh, sorry take profit at the target price of let's say 20 percent Oh, sorry, 20% should be here. Uh, let's say uh, $15. No, that's, that's $1,000 at the price of um, $13,000. $1, yeah, so th that way you need to wait for the price. And actually, that's it, 40%. You need to wait for the price to rise by 40%. Not from that point. 40% to lock in your returns. So why would you risk that much? Why? Because you see, 
the chances that the price will reach 40% uh, is, are slightly lower than if you set multiple take profits and spread your investment. So for example, instead of 40, you said, I want to sell 20% uh, of my entire position once the price rises by 10%. Once it rises by 15%, I want to sell another 20 of my position. Once it rises to 25%, maybe, this time I want to sell 30%. And the, the rest is left for my the highest take profit, which is 40% from the uh, initial price level. And here, I want to sell the remaining, which is 40%. So that way... You kind of spread the risk and you increase the odds of getting out of the market with some profit because you have multiple orders to get out of the market. So the closer you set them to your uh, entry price, bigger is the chance that it will be triggered. Okay. So instead of waiting to sell everything at the price which will rise by 40%, it really makes sense to spread the risk, get a bit uh, less from the market than you would otherwise get if you would have only one take profit at 40%. But the trade-off here is that, once again, you increase the chances of getting out of the market with at least some profit because it may never end up reaching 40% of the price growth. It may, let's say, rise to only 25%, which is like the, uh, the third layer of your take profit. And, and, and that from that point it will fall again for example okay so if you would trade only with uh, a one take profit you would be uh, in a loss in that case because you didn't actually realize any returns out of the market but when you have multiple take profits like we have now on this chart that way we would have sold 20% at the 10% of the growth 20% we would sell at the 15% of the price growth and 30% we would sell at the, at the price growth of 25%, okay? So we would be out of the market by 70% by already. You see, 20 plus 20 plus 30, that's 70%. We would stay in the market with the remaining of... Uh, oh, actually, you see, it's, it's, it's a wrong calculation, it should be 30. Yeah, so in, in that way, we would be left with only 30%. So uh, that way, you can maximize your returns by spreading your uh your your no but, but, but by having multiple take profits you increase the chances of getting out of the market with some profit and and also you minimize the loss because for example in this scenario where the price rises by 25 percent but you don't have this take profits here you have only take profit at at 40 percent you see, you see, it falls from that point even lower, below the entry price. And that way you are by 100% of this entire position in a loss. So with, with multiple take profits, you have a better uh, market strategy because you spread the risk. And that way you maximize your returns because... It realizes some profits from the market by executing this first and then the second take profit and then the third take profit and that way you get out of the market with some profit which will eventually offset the the loss that you would have incurred with the remaining of 30 percent of your position which was not sold as the price did not reach 40 percent of the price growth okay so these are some tips and tricks you can use. I really like this feature we have here, having multiple take profit orders, because that way you really split the risk and yeah, increase the odds. And most importantly, it even calculates the potential return. So if all of these take profit orders are triggered by the market price, then your profit is going to be 331 US dollar, USDT in that case. And the same way you can have your stop loss to show you the uh, potential loss you can have. 
So let's say you set your stop loss here. Your entry price is where you have this yellow line on the chart. So that's exactly minus 17% from the entry price. So you risk to lose $180 for the reward of $400. So you can even, let's say, let's say it's not 17, but maybe 20. So if you divide the potential return by the risk you take, it's going to be a ratio of 2 to 1. Which means that for one dollar you risk, your reward is going to be two dollars, and that's the rational trading. Because when your potential return exceeds your potential risks, it means that this trade is worth it. But you need to make sure that market conditions are favorable, and that, and that there are big chances of the of the price to trigger your take profits if they are too far from the entry price i mean the, the chances are uh, way lower in that case so you also need to take into account the fundamental aspects of the coin you selected to trade you need to be really sure that it's gonna pump and you also need to make sure that uh, you don't put all the money in one trade don't forget about the diversification. So don't forget about other coins. Don't forget about other strategies. That's why I have this split. 50% goes to automated bots. 20% goes to smart trading. And the rest goes to uh, holding strategies. So we had this market sell-off, as you remember, as of the 7th of September. So we all incurred some loss here if you were trading back then um, but thanks to automated bots they kind of offset this impact this negative impact we had uh, in the next five days because you see the market has been trading sideways and that way it gave our s bots opportunity to make money so, for example, my ALGA trade is going just great. See, 99% in one and a half month. That's insane result. So, not only did it pick that high, but also you see the price been moving sideways for quite a long time here. And we know that on the sideways market, SBOT is like the, the best one. So, that's why you see it managed to capture all these market price swings. And also thanks to the trailing down and trailing up features enabled here. So there have been questions about the trailing up and trailing down. Let me tell you first. Maybe not here, but maybe on the bots. Okay. So here we have the trailing up. So for those of you who don't know the trailing up feature, lets your bot to follow the market price even if the price is now trading above of the uh, initial trading range that you set so for example if the price of oxt goes above of my highest order i have in this trading range then with the trading up it will still trade for me even if the price is going to be here because what it's going to do it's just going to it's just going to restructure my grids it's going to set new orders so that it could follow the market okay and that way it works for on on the algo for example as you can see the whole story started uh, in this area back then the price was 0 0.86 so the trading range was i think around this area yeah the same white is here it was the same white pretty much over here and it's been following the rally since then and now you see this trading range over here so that's the huge benefit of the trading up and that's something you can uh, have on only few platforms 
as I know, and Bitcap is one of them, and it's make and it's made it that easy. So it's just you switch it on, and here we go. You are in the market. You can always switch it off if you don't want it to uh, to follow the market rally anymore. But let's say you decided to change your mind again, and then you in the, in the next two days you decide, okay, it was a better decision to switch off my trailing up. I want to switch it on back again. You can do this. You can switch it on back again, and the configuration will restructure grid levels again so that you can follow now the uh, market rally again. Okay? So that's how it works. Pretty much the same with the uh, trailing down feature. Okay? With the trailing down, you basically plot... Uh, well, no, it's best best to say you let the bot to plot new buy orders using the quote currency from your available balance. So that's why you have here, on, on, in my case, NA for Solana and NA for Alga, because both were triggered by the trading down and trading up. So that means there was extra money put into this because of the trading down. I even have one and the trading down feature. So wh whenever it starts to trade below the initial uh, trading range, it will set new buy orders over here until the price level at which you set your stop trading down. So it's gonna buy more until this price level, until the stop trading down. And so that way you can always uh, restructure your, uh, reconfigure your bot even when it's live. So when, let's say you see the bot is no longer trading in a range and that way you would see a range status here or uh, the yellow one, range. But you can set the trading down and that way you, you, you give extra uh, money for the bot to continue trading. Okay, But only do this if you really think that the price will bounce off uh, the support line quite rapidly to recover from the uh, market sell off okay so that's the thing about the trading up and the trading down um, so for example you can have your stop loss trading in the smart trade mode with limit buy order so that means that for example uh, let's set at uh, $5.8 maybe. No, that's it. $6. And let's set your trailing stop 5% from the entry price. Okay? So that's what we have here. Once the price falls here, it triggers this yellow order, which is in this case a buy order. Uh, your stop loss will be plotted on the exchange and if the price will start to rise then the the stop loss that you set it's not gonna stay here it's gonna follow the market maintaining this gap you set between the entry price and the stop loss which is five percent okay so if the price is now trading here where i have my uh, green line here your stop loss is going to be exactly where it maintains this five percent so which is around here okay so it's 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 gonna be following the market and that way at some point your stop loss becomes your uh take profit because when you are in the profit zone in our case the profit zone is the area above the entry price so this is your profit zone pretty much and below is your loss area let's make it red okay so when the price is now above your entry price like the market price above your entry price and the stop loss you set with the gap between your entry price of 5% is now trading above 
the entry price in the profit zone, that means it's that, that it, it is pretty much your take profit now. And it's never gonna fall down back again because it's only trailing up. If the price, for some reason, uh, after a sharp price decides to fall, then in that case, your trailing stop will not follow the, the, the market down. It's going to stay where it stayed the last time the market was rallying. Okay? So that's why at some point it will become your take profit. So it's a really cool feature because that way you can secure your returns. Initially, you start with the trading stop loss, which acts as a stop loss. But once you are in the profit zone, it will become your take profit, which is a good thing because if the market uh, starts to fall unexpectedly and you are away from your keyboard, uh, sorry, computer, and you don't have a chance to close this trade manually, for example, then at least you know that you have this uh, trailing stop loss that will save your returns because it now acts as a pretty much trading take profit. Okay. In case of the bot, when you have trailing up enabled, then if you also have the stop loss, the stop loss becomes trading. So you set the trading up and it automatically create, uh, triggers a trading function for the stop loss. So it's going to move together with the market. So let's let's check on algo. No, yeah, yeah I'll, let's go with algo. So initially my stop loss was here. But now, because the price has been in a rally and we are now trading over here, the stop loss would be around this area. So you see, it's, it's a perfect scenario for me because it exactly lays where I would expect it to be if the price starts to fall. Because it would mean that it's now below the support line and most likely it will fall to the next uh, support, key support level. But I will be out of the market already here before it actually happens. So that's why having this stop loss in my automated bots with the trading up feature enabled, it's like the ultimate combination you can have to maximize your returns and to uh, secure uh, and uh, to maximize your returns and to, and to minimize the loss. That's like the ultimate combination. Okay. <coughs> so let's see real quick. What are the questions you can have? Um, yeah, I'm really starting to lose my voice. I'm sorry for that. So here's the question. Um, is it a good idea to start my spot bots with my grids at the same level as the current price and then letting trading up do the thing? Sorry, do the buying. Well, yes, exactly. I mean, uh, you, don't, you don't need to... Um, set a really wide trading range initially to capture the whole potential price movement you can have even in the area where the price is not yet explored so we can assume that this area is not yet explored so for example in in this trading setup that i set i decided to have this wide trading range it's just because i want to have the grid step of three percent okay so i want to get this big margin returns from the trade but uh, as we back tested initially on this webcast you would see uh, better results if you would uh, set your trading range here a narrow one and in, in that case your grid step would be around 0. what 59 percent or something that was i think uh, Uh, no, that's Kuzama. I think we checked it on OXT, right? OXT, $1,000. Hey, come on. That's, that's really strange. Okay, whoop. here we go. Yeah, so this would be a setup. We can backtest it. 
and see what we result. So yeah, it would be 6.55, 54% for the last seven days, which is not the case for me because it's only 1.48%. So yeah, it actually it would make sense if, if I would expect this kind of sideways market in the next seven days, then yeah, I would set this kind of narrow setup, but I didn't want to really care much about OXT. I just wanted to have some OXT on my balance and to get out of the market gradually with the 3% of the margin. But for like active high frequency trading, it would achieve bigger returns here if I would have a narrow trading range with the trading up enabled because if, if we when we have the trading up enabled and the price price goes above of the uh, upper limit price the trading range will still follow the market okay so it would be here now the same thing I have on algo okay on algo my grid step is 0 0.79 and yeah you see it's a narrow gap you can even see the, the range. It's only 15%. That's a narrow gap. And so far it may be 100% in for the last one and a half month. Okay. So it's usually you can you can uh, have different strategies. It, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, having a wider uh, trading range is worse or better than having a narrow trading range. It's really case by case. And depends on the way the coin is going to trade, whether it's going to trade in the sideways market or it's a falling market that will happen in the next week or a rising market in the next week. Depending on your anticipation, uh, you set different strategies. Okay, So the rule of thumb is that you set a classic bot if you expect the market to rally. It's the best one to achieve highest return when the price is, is going high, establishes new higher highs. Okay, something is wrong with my drawing tool today. And you set the, the as bot when you expect the price to move sideways or you expect the price to fall a bit before it bounces off and rises back again. So that's the case for the as bot to, to, to bring you the, the biggest returns here that's why you see i have different bots i have as bots i have classic bots depending on my expectations let's let's actually see what are the top performers here uh average daily so you see so far my as bots they achieved the biggest returns and that's because we had a series of uh sell-offs on the market and we know that on the on the on the falling market and when the market is moving sideways as bot is the best one so that's why you see these are basically my top performers and the classic bot performers they brought me the least of the return because of this market sell-offs and the price moving sideways it's not really the best one to use when this kind of market scenarios happen but yeah you can never be 100 percent right in the direction so it, it basically means that out of the uh, 12 trades that i have here three of them uh, i was wrong about them uh, i was wrong to set a classic bot on uni snx and oxc uh, a month ago so i should have sticked with the as bot and this would result in a better uh, performance eventually okay don't forget about the new analytics the, the new dashboard you have here so for example you can compare the results. What would be if you would just hold all coins? That's the initial balance when you started the bot. And that's the result you would get if you would just hold all these 70 inches. It would be just $20. With the bot actively trading, it would be $74. Okay. So that's the uh, apparent advantage of automated bots uh, in this kind of scenarios. Holding is never the best. It, it, it's not always the best strategy to follow. Automated bots can bring you more returns than a simple holding strategy. Okay, so yeah, that's why I really recommend you to diversify with strategies. So in my case, that's fifty percent in automated bots because I know that they're gonna bring me returns daily, and they're gonna offset the 
uh, the loss if the market is falling because of its dollar cost averaging effect and uh, features like the stop loss and then the investments being spread by multiple orders so these kind of things okay and now you know how to trade in a smart trade where you have multiple take profits you can manually set you have projected return projected loss you can calculate if this trade scenario is worth it or not if the projected return exceeds the projected loss then it's worth it if it's not then it makes no sense to to uh, open trades that will bring you uh, a return but for a higher risk taken okay from the logical standpoint it makes no sense so yeah and mix mix with these strategies because you now know how to trade automated bots you know how to trade uh, in a smart trade so the best way to uh so the best yeah the, the best way is to practice always okay and that's why we have this demo mode and in the demo mode you can trade with your virtual money and you can experiment with different orders until you learn each single one that you want to use and you and, and you experimented with different market scenarios and now you know the best way to use the stop limit for example or the stop market or stop Stop, stop market buy or stop market sell order it's really about uh, practicing so the more you practice the quicker you will grasp the the nature of this smart trade mode and how to come up with the golden strategy for yourself based on the orders you can use because you can mix with them you can have limit orders mixed with the stop uh, market sell or buy orders mixed with the stop limit buy sell orders so as you now understand the logic of these orders you can now mix the logic you can you can uh, combine the orders together to create the ultimate strategy in the smart trade mode in bots it's easier so that's why if you are a newcomer i i i recommend to start with limit buy and limit sell orders and with a simple classic bot uh at beats cap of course you can start in the demo mode until you, you, you trade on the demo mode it's like a sandbox for you risk-free but still you get this experience you get this better understanding of how to act on uh, rapidly changing market conditions when it's the best time to switch from the classic board to as board and vice versa so it's really all about the practice and i really hope you guys take advantage of all these features we have because that's like the ultimate experience you can have an all-in-one platform to have uh, diverse strategies uh, risk-free trade mode to experiment with new strategies or to uh, get new skills get new expertise absolutely risk-free it's like nowhere else you can actually find this level of uh, practical orientation you can have uh, at beats cap okay um, is there any difference in return with using binance compared to binance us to be honest i don't know if on the binance us you have a different fee structure when on an ordinary global binance okay so it may be the case for you if you are a u.s citizen and you trade in on binance us it may be that the fee structure is different but i'm not sure about that because i'm i don't have this uh urge to trade on binance us because yeah well i'm not a us citizen so i cannot trade uh, on binance us so for, that's why i don't know much about the binance us but i think it's pretty much the same what the, the trick is by the way um on, on binance uh they have quite uh, large minimum threshold so for example for most coins that they have they set a minimum trade size of ten dollars so if you want to sell or buy a certain coin at least you need to spend ten dollars which is not the case for other other exchanges like okex or huobi for example so that's why on my real account i have binance huobi and okex because i know if let's say i want to trade uh 
OXT coin, and I know that there is OXT on, on both the Binance and, and Huobi, then I'm going to stick with Huobi because I know that on Huobi, they set a lower uh, minimum trade size requirements compared with the Binance. So you, you, you could have, you can have uh, trade configurations worth, let's say, two hundred dollars, which you would otherwise not be able to afford on the Binance because of their minimum trade size requirements. Okay, and you would not get this amount of greed levels on Binance because of these uh, strict requirements. Okay, so it's really about that. Sometimes you have only uh some coins on binance that are not listed anywhere else you you would love to trade so for example i prefer to trade on okex and hob and binance but if there is no coin that i want to to trade on either okex or hob or binance then most likely i gotta skip it okay because i prefer to trade on the uh, reputable exchanges and on, on the exchanges that have the uh, uh, liquidity and, and been on the market for a long time, they had the credibility, and yeah, that kind of brings more clarity. And uh, we, we all, we, we, I mean, I've been following this market since like 2016, I would say, and, and, and Binance was since 2017 my leader, and it's been four years since then, and it's still like the top one. And yeah, well deserved. So that's why Binance is usually my first priority. But we also have some other. So it's it's just depends on how you determine whether or not you can afford trading on Huobi or OKEX, whether or not you're restricted to trade on these exchanges. If you are satisfied with the level of security they uh, offer to you, well, it's you need to have a, conduct your own due diligence on that before you select. The list of cryptocurrency exchanges you want to trade on but yeah there is always a difference between them and uh, on Huobi and OKEx they have uh, lower requirements than on Binance so sometimes I launch automated bots on Huobi instead of Binance okay just because of the trade requirements so yeah I think uh, we covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover today uh, is it best to use VPN in order to trade internationally when you are in the US? Uh, well, as far as I know, you actually need to pass the KYC if you want to withdraw uh, a certain volume. Like I think it's from. If I'm not, I'm not sure what's the. I mean, so on Binance they have three levels of uh, verification. And depending on the level of verification, you get different perks. So if you need to have these perks, which are only uh, available on the uh, second layer of verification, then you need to have a you need to pass a stricter KYC. And well, using VPN will not save you from that because they still can see who you are where you are based at, so they, they would see you are using VPN. But I actually uh, honestly had this experience using VPN uh, in, the, in, in, in the region where I stayed, and this region is restricted. It's in the list of restricted uh, regions from which you cannot trade on Binance. But I guess they mostly uh, they have this built-in... Uh, system to monitor your activity and if they see that you were registered in a country which is allowed which is not prohibited to trade and you've been uh, using this same ip multiple times and uh, only in, in rare cases you used uh, um, not typical ips because of the vpn i don't think they're going to restrict you but if you use if you i mean if you are not a U.S. citizen and somehow you manage to get registered on the Binance U.S. using U.S. VPN, well, I, I, I'm pretty much sure at some point they can uh, 
find this out and they can easily uh, halt trading for you. So I'd rather not play with this thing because these are centralized exchanges and they need to comply with some strict regulations. So that's the risk we take. And I'd rather not use a VPN on Binance, to be honest. Yeah. So I think that's 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 it for today. That's what we wanted to cover. Uh, I wish I had more time, and uh, I wish I hadn't got the uh, sore throat uh, to to yeah to, to to speak more. But as of now, I, I feel like that's the end of today's webcast. If you have some questions and answered, yes, always feel free to leave them in the comment section below. You can always uh, reach out to the support team. And you can always ask the question next time on the next webcast because we host this webcast on the uh, reoccurring basis. So we're going to have it next Thursday, most likely. So stay, uh, stay tuned, uh, connect uh, with Beatscap on Twitter, Telegram, stay updated. You can watch previous webcasts to learn more about trading and some other tips that I covered on previous webcasts. And you can also uh, go to Beatscare blog to get some education because we have some educational material, some uh, trading tips and tricks as well, and even trade configurations for automated bots that I uh, designed based on the uh, patterns you can recognize on the market. So yeah, uh, I wish you profitable trading, stay safe, uh, try not to get sick as I did last week, uh, feed your immune system with enough of the vitamins because it's, uh, it's a fall and usually we get a fall feeder. So yeah, don't forget about your immune system. Stay strong guys and yeah, peace, love and see you next time.